Welcome to Trust Talks with BBB Serving CT. I'm Kristen Johnson. In business, Trust Talks and Better Business Bureau's mission is to enhance marketplace trust. In each one of our episodes, we hope to give you a better idea of what to look for, or what to look out for, and what to expect so you can spend your money wisely and avoid being scammed. We celebrate love this time of year. That might mean buying that special someone flowers or jewelry. In fact, the National Retail Federation estimates that we Americans spent nearly $26 million on cars, candy, flower, and jewelry last year. And you may be tempted to pick something out from the internet with just a click of the button. But buyer beware, what you see online isn't always the real deal. Joining me today is Bob Muska. He's the owner of Broadbrook Gardens in South Windsor. And today we're gonna get some advice from him on what to look for when buying flowers. Bob, thanks for being with us today. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Glad to be here. So tell me a little bit about your business, first of all. Well, I opened up Broadbrook Gardens in 1986. Um, but I started actually driving for my uncle who owned a flower shop when I was 16 years old. I've actually been in the flower business for 53 years. Um, but in 1986, I, brought, I bought Broadbrook Gardens, uh, opened up in the little town of Broadbrook. And currently we're in South Windsor on Sullivan Avenue. And we've been there since uh, 2010. So we've been there for 13 years now. And having um, some very good business years lately. Yeah, how has the industry changed in that time? Uh, mostly, um, the difference is years ago, there were no uh, ways of buying flowers, uh, buying flowers online, so you would have to either call the shop or physically come in and, and place your order. And now with the internet, um, a lot of people use the convenience of going online and ordering their flowers that way. So there's a lot more online competition. Absolutely, yes. What, what about local flower shops? Are there more or less than there were when you got in the business? Um, there is a lot less. And uh, actually, since um, COVID hit, there's even uh, less now than before COVID because it kind of, be honest with you, kind of weeded out the business florists and the actual professional florists. Oh, interesting, interesting. Well, let's talk, yeah. let's talk about, we were just talking about internet, but let's talk about if you're gonna go into a store, you're gonna buy flowers, I'm there at Broadbrook Gardens. Oh, what do I need? What are some of the common ways that I can tell if the flowers are fresh? What do I need to be looking for? Oh, you don't wanna see any brown on the petals. You don't wanna see any wilted leaves. Uh, and. Uh, basically want to, and you don't want to see any bent heads on the flowers. Uh, in general, I would find that uh, if you're a busy flower shop, there's not going to be a lot of old flower shops in the store. And in our case, for sure, at Broadbrook Gardens, there's very seldom any, any flowers that you would worry about being old or wilted. So we don't run into that a lot at our shop. Of course. Are there different tips depending on the flower, like a rose versus like a carnation or a lily, like that you should be looking for? Um, well, roses should have nice, firm heads uh, straight up. Carnations, um, no brown edges. Uh, lilies, uh, lilies, if they, they should be semi-opened. And if they're semi-opened, the anthers, which are the little brown, uh, little brown things at the end of the stamens should be picked off because um, if those brown sta uh, stamens are still on the lily and if they shed any pollen, into the lily, it's going to cause it to go bad. So uh, a good florist will usually pick them off right away. And once they're picked off, their longevity will generally increase for and sure. Do you typically <clears throat> want, like with a rose or I don't know, maybe a tulip, like you want the flower to be mostly closed still, right? So it's time to open? Roses, they should have some amount of openness because okay. if, if a rose is really, really, really tight and the petals are curving in, we call that a bullet, and a lot, and many times that rose is not going to open, and and it's just going to live its life for a little bit, and the head's going to drop, mm. and you're not going to get any beauty out of it or longevity. Okay. So even though a rose may be semi-opened, one thing you can do is you can actually physically 
take the rose and squeeze, not really crush it, but squeeze the rose just a little bit. And if it's firm, then you know there's a lot of petal count to the rose, and it's going to last you a good long time. Okay, very good, very good tips. Any other flower tips that before we move on to purchasing that we should know? Well, if flowers, the, the one thing that's going to make a flower uh, die more quickly than usual is if the water has bacteria in it. So um, we always tell our customers when they get flowers, take all the flowers out of the vase, dump it out, add fresh water every day and put it back in. Every and that's day. that's pretty much, yes, yes. And plant food as well? Um, if the plant food is, if you, if you don't plan on changing your water every day, add a little bit of the plant food. Um, and also another thing you can do is if you drink Sprite or have Sprite in your house, a little bit of Sprite in the water does the same thing as plant food because okay. it has sugar and it has the acidic acid in it that's going to kill the bacteria so that helps them stay alive as well i'm learning so many new things so let's talk about your, your shopping for flowers one of the common complaints that we receive is that the flowers didn't arrive on time or they didn't look like the picture online if you're purchasing it online how can we avoid this i would think the most times that's going to happen is if someone actually goes online and orders their flowers from an order gatherer, which basically I mean they're, they could call themselves a certain name flower shop, but they're actually, they could actually be a cubicle in New York City or something like that. And they're taking the orders and, and then they send the, uh, send the orders to a real flower shop via the computer. And if the florist doesn't have the product that's on the order gatherer's website, then the closest thing the florist can do is send the closest thing to the picture that um, they have available. And that's probably one of the main reasons why, because um, first of all, the order gatherer possibly has pictures on there of flowers that are not in season at the time. Or, and florists can't carry every single flower available, so it may have a, an item in there that the florist just doesn't have and they have to use the closest thing possible. And that probably is the reason why it doesn't look exactly like the picture. And order gatherers have gained popularity as the internet Absolutely. has shown up, right? Absolutely. And it's mainly because if you go online and um, you'll see, an, they may have their name and say the number one florist serving that town for a number of years. And it could actually not be a flower ship shop in that town whatsoever. And like I said, they could be just taking orders out of a cubicle in a city and pretending they're a real florist. And then they have to send the order to an actual florist who's in that town that makes the deliveries in that town. So reason number one to do your research always. Right. So you should always, if you're gonna look for a florist in that, in that town, Google the flower shop Google flower shops in that town, click on that shop, and make sure they have a physical address within that town. You can also do that at bbb.org as yes, well. Yes, you can. So mm. as far as flowers not mm. being delivered on time, it, it, we had talked both previously about the fact that, you know, the expectation, um, the, this idea that I can order something and it's going to be there tomorrow, that's not always the case with flowers. Well, if you... In our case, if you ask for a delivery for, say, tomorrow, yes, we can do that. We can do that the next day, no problem. In fact, if you call our shop, if you call like by 10 in the morning, we can, we can get an order out that day for, for sure. But we find the biggest, um, biggest problem is that people will go online and order something I think the majority of the time, the problem is going to be safe for a funeral service. And they go online and it's like 10 o'clock at night and they forgot, oh, so-and-so is having a funeral tomorrow. We've got to get something there. And the, and the service happens eight or nine in the morning. Then we're not open till nine. And that person placed that order and the order gatherer never says no. So they're, they're going to take the order, send it over the computer. And we physically get the order at nine in the morning and the service started already. So we can't possibly get it there on time. And that's, 
one of the problems with not actually talking directly to the business that you want the product to come from. So tip number two, call the business directly, right. call the right. floral shop directly and say, right. is this feasible? And a lot of it's common sense. If it's eight or nine o'clock at night and the service is nine o'clock in the morning and you know, flower shops generally are not open at night, you you basically got to know you're too late and okay. Um, okay. maybe shoot for a home delivery t instead that of that point. funeral delivery. So Valentine's Day is coming up. That's a popular time to give flowers. Uh, mm -hmm. Mother's Day as well. How far in advance do you recommend placing your order to ensure they are delivered on time around popular holidays? I would say anywhere from three days to a week in advance. For sure. And you've already estimated how much you're going to sell. You've already placed that order. We it's have placed shop, our right? orders already, yes, for our, for our roses and all the other products we use. What advice do you have for someone sending flowers to someone out of state or in a different city? Well, if someone calls us and wants a flor flowers, say, go to Florida or another another state, instead, of, we actually uh, have the ability to use FDD or Teleflora and send the order over the computer. But we feel that um, it's best for that person to talk directly to the florist. So uh, we generally will Google a flower shop or look on our, on our computer and see if, if there's a florist in that town that we can recommend. And we give the person that number and we recommend that they call directly. And then that way they'll find out, you know, what the florists are charging for their product and what they're charging for delivery and what they have in stock. And so, or they can actually look on the other shop's website and talk directly to that florist and make sure they can get the product that they're looking to send. If you're having flowers delivered for someone else, you want to make sure they have your contact information right, as well, right? right. So you're always going to want to give the other florist the recipient's phone number, which is very important, especially like in the winter now, we can't make a delivery and leave it at someone's home if they're not home. So we always insist that we have the recipient's phone number. Mm -hmm. As well as the, as, the as well as the sender's away. number, so we can inform them if there's a problem with that order. Okay. Well, yeah. around Valentine's Day, unfortunately, fake floral shops pop up with uh, the scammers having no intention of actually delivering on your order. In other cases, flowers are delivered, but they either look nothing like the picture, they arrive damaged, or um, and then attempts to get a refund are ignored. Some consumers have even reported to Better Business Bureau that after they paid, they were contacted by the floral shop and forced to upgrade their purchase, adding extra charges for something they didn't even want to begin with. So here are some red flags that we want you to be aware of if you do plan to purchase flowers. The business has no reviews or it has bad reviews. Remember, always check bbb.org. You can't find a return policy or satisfaction guarantee on their website, and the deal just seems too good to be true. Make sure you or the recipient take a photo of the delivered arrangement so that you can compare it to the online photo or what was promised in the shop. Ask about all fees associated with your order and make sure the date is specified clearly and guaranteed when you order. Pay with a credit card, which offers the most protection. If the business won't take a credit card, that is a red flag. And don't be, be, don't be deceived by promotions. Most have terms and conditions, so check that you're getting the savings you expect. You can even do a reverse image search to see if the photo has been copied by another site, because unfortunately this time of year, there are those fake websites out there and scammers will take logos, they'll take fonts, they'll take sales ads, and they'll make their own website. Unless you look at that URL very closely, you don't realize you're not on the real site. Do you have any other advice for people uh, searching online for flowers this time of year? Well, first of all, a real florist is not going to charge you extra for a delivery time. Okay. Uh, come Valentine's Day, you know, we're going to have probably 150 to 175 deliveries to make on that day in like five or six of our surrounding towns. And we cannot promise a morning delivery by a certain time, you know, we can estimate that, you know, it can be there by early afternoon, uh, but we're never going to charge extra. And if someone, if someone, if you're online and in other places, say charging you $10 extra to guarantee morning delivery, 
I, that's probably not going to happen. So I would be definitely aware of charges or service charges to guarantee something. Because on a busy holiday like Valentine's Day, uh, a regular flower shop is, there. you know, we're going to have five or six delivery drivers. And we're going to make sure that, say, schools get out on get out first or businesses get out first. So if, if another... Uh, pretend flower shop is saying, you know, charging you $20 to make sure your delivery gets there by 10 in the morning. Don't do it because it's probably not going to happen. And that is a complaint that we get at BBB yeah. all the time. So thank you for sharing that advice. Now let's take a break from flowers just for a second to talk about jewelry. According to NASDAQ, 21% of people plan to purchase jewelry as a Valentine's gift. That's $5.5 billion of the sparkly stuff. Scammers can easily lift official photos, sales promotions, and logos directly from the website of a popular jewelry store, just like they do with floral shops. They'll build websites, they'll copy those logos and make it look eerily similar to the real thing. So we've got some tips if you plan to buy jewelry online this Valentine's Day. BBB recommends that before making a purchase, read the refund, warranty, and guarantee policies carefully. Find out how long the recipient will have to return the item. If the store advertises a lifetime guarantee policy, ask for the details. Also, keep the receipt. You can ask for a certificate of replacement cost or an appraisal listing, the qualities of the gemstone or precious metals too. And this can actually help with reselling in the future. Common complaints to BBB against jewelry stores allege poor craftsmanship, issues returning items, and problems with guarantees and warranties. So make sure you do your research before making a purchase and read what previous customers are sharing about their experiences with the business. Bob, I have a few more questions regarding flowers. It is cold mm -hmm. this time of year. You kind of alluded to it a second ago. Um, what would you recommend if the recipient isn't going to be home? Well, what we generally do is we will... Make sure, first of all, if you're sending flowers to someone that you have the correct phone number because mm -hmm. we will call the recipient, tell them we have a delivery, and it, because of temperatures, we can't leave anything if they're not home, and ask them to call us and let us know when they'll be home so we can coordinate a delivery time for them. Okay, but can you say, oh, please don't leave the flowers at their door? Right, right. Well, uh, in all honesty, uh, when an order comes from a non-flower shop, mm -hmm. a lot of times, doesn't matter what time of the year, it'll say, leave the arrangement at the front door if they're wow. not home. And we we won't do that. If it's, you know, if it's 40 degrees or, you know, 45 to 38 degrees, we'll bag the arrangement. And if we're able to contact the recipient, and we can leave that arrangement in a safe spot and let them know where they'll find that, we will do that. But we'll never leave an arrangement if it's the chances are that it may freeze or get damaged. So it's important to, to, um, to have a contact number and make sure that contact number is correct and the address for sure is correct. So you mentioned that it's a red flag if there's these extra surcharges or delivery fees to get something right. there at a certain time. Um, but in general, do the base prices of bouquets go up around holidays? Like, are, will they be get more expensive as you get closer to Valentine's Day or Mother's Day? We have a, we know what we're going to be paying for our flowers a month in advance of Valentine's Day. So yes, our rose price goes up because we're paying probably twenty percent more for our roses at Valentine's Day than we are. Um, during the regular time of the year. So we establish our prices uh, as soon as we know what we're going to be paying. And and whether it's a week, be you, whether you order your flowers a week before or an hour before you're coming in, the prices are going to maintain the same. So would you say it's a red flag if, if someone's yeah, if someone wants to, closer. if someone says, you know, we're, we're you know, you know, for $20 more, we can guarantee delivery by a certain time the next day. That's a red flag for sure. That's not going to happen. Is there such thing as a return policy with flowers? When someone says their arrangements didn't last and they're disappointed, um, 
First of all, we're going to ask them where they kept their flowers in their home, if they happen to keep them within an area where there's a heat source, or did they change their water, um, yeah. et cetera. Well, first of all, ask them their question, ask those questions which we feel may have limited the lifespan of the flowers, but we're, we will replace that arrangement for them. Okay. With you know, within a reasonable time, if someone yeah. calls us and says, "I've had my flowers for a week and they just died," <laughs> that, you know, typical, that's right? that's not bad. I mean, so we're not, you know, you know, we may, uh, we may, you know, drop off a couple flowers just to, you know, just to make sure we're not ignoring them by any means. But uh, are there certain types of flowers you recommend that if you really want them to last longer, certain types that last longer and certain other types that you, that right. you just can't I expect? Mean, you know, if you're, if someone wants roses, if you get, if you get five days to five to 10 days out of roses, you're doing very well. Uh, but one way to make them last longer is to uh, change the water in the vase every day. And that doesn't mean add water to the current vase that you have. Uh, that means physically pull your roses out of the vase and totally change the water. And every other day, if you can give them a, a quick cut, take about a half inch off the base of the stem with a real sharp pair of scissors or like a paring knife, um, that's going to make them last longer as well. Fresh cut. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do, do you have a favorite flower? My favorite flower is called stock. Um, okay. It's a long, almost like a snapdragon type flower. Oh, yeah. And it smells, it smells like cinnamon. And so it smells beautiful, but in all honesty, it's not one of your longer lasting flowers. So it's a, it's a maybe a three to five day flower at the most. But I love the look of it and I love the smell of it. And that's my favorite flower. What are the longest lasting flowers? Uh, chrysanthemums, you know, okay. daisy chrysanthemums, mm -hmm. carnations, alstroemeria, which some people call them Peruvian lilies. They have like a little cluster of like four or five uh, flowers on a stem. They should last you. If you give them a fresh cut and change the water frequently, they should give you at least two weeks for sure. Okay. Carnations the same. We've had mm -hmm. people say they've had carnations for a month. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Well, yeah. as you mentioned off the top, you've been in business since 1986. You've been in this industry even longer, but you guys just decided to seek BBB accreditation about a year ago. So mm -hmm. tell me about that decision. Why did you decide to, to seek accreditation with BBB? Well, I think BBB researches who they're offering their membership to. Um, and to, I think if you're in BBB, you have to be a business that stands by your product, is dedicated to customer service, and, you know, cares about their customers and, you know, wants to be the best they can be, pretty much. And what do you hope your accreditation says to your customers when they see that sticker on the window that... That BBB seal, what, or on your website, what, what do you hope it says to them? I, I think, uh, I feel that, I hope they know that they can call us and they're going to get the best possible service and the freshest product they can get from us. Well, Bob, I thank you so much for not only being part of BBB, but for sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you. And I, I've pleasure. learned a lot and I hope those out there have learned a lot as, as well. Thank you. To wrap things up, I want to remind you to always do your research before spending money, whether it's on jewelry, flowers, candy, chocolates, something else. Um, at BBB.org, there are business profiles for 20 thousand florists and about 19,000 jewelry stores. So you have a, a lot of options. Read what other customers have said. Um, read the complaints. See how the businesses deal with those complaints and, and look at those reviews. And this information may help you narrow down that list of options for you. Again, we thank Bob for being with us today and we thank you as well. We'll see you next time. Sometimes life just happens. Don't worry. 
Farmington Motorsports will get you back on the road and at a fair price. From towing to tires, emissions to transmissions. Our ASC certified techs do it all. Farmington Motorsports is a family-run business. We're a Napa Auto Center and AAA approved. We work on all makes and models from preventative maintenance to major repairs. And every repair is backed by our two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty. When life happens to you, don't worry. Farmington Motorsports. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Andrew Lynn. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Veterans Corner. My name is Chuck Wooden. Decision for ourselves for this week if we want to be made well. Hi, welcome to the crack of dawn. It's Dawn Lombardi. I'm starting the painting. It's going to be the clips with some water. Love it. He took me on the sets of Lost in Space, Batman. Everybody has a story. What's yours? Until next time, 